Welcome along to Snedston for the fourth event in the 2013 Toyo Tires Porsche Championship. The championship led by Richard Styrin, who's down in the paddock. Richard, qualifying over some great weather here at Snedston, and uh, Mr. Littman seems to be on your tail at the moment. Yeah, as the um, year's going on, there's uh, J.M. Littman that's learning about the car, how to set it up, Will Sharp, Jonathan Greensmith, Steve Boyles, and in fact the whole field are learning the car and getting closer and closer with the gap. Yeah, P2 is good. I wasn't happy with my time. Uh, just wasn't happy with my performance. But I got to look at P2. It's alongside Rick, and uh, we got a very long 20-minute race. It's going to be very hot, and I know I'm good at the end of a race and uh, lo looking after my tyres. So let's try and get a win. Alistair, qualifying over, and you're second in your class there, which is ideal. Um, these conditions, pretty tough on driver and car, though. They are, yeah. It, um, it, it's so hot this weekend that the, the tyres are suffering, so the grip isn't what it could be, and quite a lot of drivers were complaining after the race that the car was understeering quite badly. Um, I've driven these cars for quite a long time now on these tyres, and it's typical when it's really, really hot, and it is this weekend. I mean, the temperature in the camper van's uh, 88 degrees Fahrenheit, so, uh, yeah, it's quite warm. <laughs> So Hen, first qualifying session over and uh, pole position there for your class. Uh, Alistair's fairly close though, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's about 0.5 of a second away from me. Um, it was a bit of a funny one to be honest, qualifying. I, I did actually come in and I, I don't particularly like the track. It's um, a bit of a funny one for me. Uh, the car wasn't handling right and somehow I've managed to get in pole. So see what happens in the race, I think. Richard Styrin maintains the 100% record. J.M. Littman alongside with Steve Boyles and Jonathan Greensmith Road 2. They're followed by Cliff Graham and Stephen Potts. Then it's Steve Brown and Will Sharp. Gary Goodwin ninth with R. Joe Josh alongside. Then it's Mark McKenzie and Nick Hull. Sean Siddle, car number 11, welcome back to him. Chris Valentine in car number 88. Then the production poll goes to Julian Brown from Rebecca Jackson and newcomer Michael Goodacre. Hen Sharp on pole in the 924s. He's followed by Alistair Kirkham, the returning Andrew Hannington with Clive Morrison, then Anthony McVinsky and Pete Smith, Carl Rossin and David Jones, 24th and 25th, then Paul Bravo and Hugh Peart, and Richard Matthews in 28th place in the field. Now, thus far, it's been pole position starts for Hen Sharp, Richard Styrin, and Julian Brown each time they've raced. Styron and Brown, of course, have completed all of the races so far. Hensharp was not at Zandvoort. Couple of cars getting bogged down on the start. You can see a great big run of concrete dust just soaking up the more, some more from a previous race, but Richard Styron gets away well. J.M. Littman in the white car. Steve Boyles in black and red on the inside goes up to second. Jonathan Greensmith there in yellow is in fourth, followed by Will Sharp. Then it's Cliff Graham, the red car. They're all going around Richie's the first corner, down towards Montreal, but it's a cracking start, as ever, by the Boxsters. Littman goes wide. Greensmith goes up the inside. Cliff Graham goes off. We've got a car spun off to the inside. I think that might be Will Sharp. Down towards Palmer's, the left-hand corner, and then a little bit of, of straight. The circuit straightens out as they come down to our camera at Agostini. Now off there has gone, I think Steve Potts having problems, so seemingly cars having problems here, very dry conditions, and he rejoins in the midst of the 924s, so Steve Potts the 40 year old from West Morling, very much the home territory of the organising club for the Porsche racing, the British Racing and Sports Car Club or BRSCC to give it the shortened form and uh, they put on some very good racing up and down the country not only for drivers but spectators as well so Jonathan Greensmith in yellow running in third place at the moment just ahead of J.M. Littman and they're out on the main straight the Bentley straight here at Snet and then into the left right left complex the first part of which is called Brundle you can see the circuit names adorned so that uh, first time spectators can get to learn what the commentator at the track's talking about through the bomb hole and then down towards the sweeping right hander at Corum we're looking at the 
third and fourth place cars at the moment. It looks like a good first lap for Richard Styron, who, as we said, maintained his 100% pole position qualifying record. Pole for the 924s, incidentally, at Zanvoort, the last round in Holland, was Alistair Kirkham, and he qualifies second today. You heard that Henshart wasn't overly pleased about his performance. He's not particularly keen on the track. So kicking up the dust is Richard Styron who completes lap one. The top four pretty much settled at the moment. Styron will be looking to try and build a lead. He's, he's beginning to think about championship records. The Boxsters have only been running a few seasons, but already we've got a number of records that have been set. And they were really with the first champion in the Boxsters, Dave Clark, who put an incredible run of race wins, consecutive race wins together. Now Richard Styron a little way away from getting the most consecutive race wins uh, overall as we go back down the order just to see uh, Cliff Graham not that far back down the order I hasten to add now Richard Styron if he wins this race will secure his eighth consecutive win and that's the most that Dave Clark managed to do in one season as well he did eight at the end of one season and eight at the beginning of the following season so 16 on the bounce is Dave Clark's record but in terms of consecutive wins in, in a single season Richard Styring could very well equal this if things go uh, that way now he's looking to try and I was going to say maintain 100% finishing record but he hasn't got that because he had a non-finish in the first round of this year he has had six fastest laps to go with the seven wins thus far in terms of reliability you need to look at Will Sharp and Steve Boyles both of those drivers have finished all the races they've started so far. Now the cars we're looking at, Nick Hull chasing Gary Goodwin, the Gerrard's cross base driver, David in the 2012 season, and Nick Hull, next short circuit Carter, another one of uh, many very good Yorkshire based drivers running well in the Union flag livery car. Jonathan Greensmith, as we mentioned before on the program, an ex Mazda racer, and JM Littman, a top runner in Catrams. Reeves with a top runner in Masters incidentally as well. And wonderful to see them coming together here. Drivers from different disciplines coming together in this championship. Almost making it a champion of champions event. Now oh, here is Will Sharp coming through. Obviously after that moment earlier on not looking too clever at the moment. Hasn't finished any lower than fifth. That might be... He might be about to lose that performance record but pedalling pretty well at the moment trying to close in in the 66 car but Richard Styron still clear of Steve Boyles Steve who won the opening round also took fastest lap has had three other podia since then one at Silverstone in the second race and then two uh, sorry at Rockham in the second race and two more at Silverstone as we go back down the order Gary Goodwin going through there is Arjo Josh in car number 44 Joined the championship for from event two had a best two best uh, fourth positions as Gary Goodwin goes and tags the 69 car of Mark McKenzie the Bressingham base driver taken out so Mark McKenzie one of the many drivers who's moved up from the 924s rejoins just about in front of Cliff Graham and I think Cliff's going to have to run on him so Cliff, Cliff Graham, the, the, uh, the corner they were going into incidentally is Montreal, very tight corner, so these things do happen from time to time. Back up at the sharp end, car number 11, Sean Siddle, first look at him this season, wonderful to see him out, another driver that moved up from the 924 class, and many drivers doing that, some of them skipping the production class, we've got a new driver this weekend, Michael Goodacre, the man from Warrington making his debut so a very warm welcome to the championship for him as we look at Arjo Josh trying to close down now on Nick Hull now wherever you look in the field there are some very tight battles going on doesn't only apply to the boxsters the race boxsters it applies down in the 924s as well at the moment Hen Sharp got the best of the starts in the 924 so we'll see whether he can possibly convert that into another win this, this meanwhile is the battle for third place Jonathan Greensmith is there at the moment the Hillsborough based driver a multi-champion in the uh, Master Championship and this very much a move up for him the, the Masters incidentally run by the BRSCC as well as Richard Styron keeps off the dust line this time getting further clear from Steve Boyles J.M. Littman who has slightly the less experience both of the, the drivers running for third and fourth newcomers to the championship as passed Sean Siddle goes Will Sharp in car number 66 so 
Will starting to make a little bit of a recovery drive through the field. That's good to see. Will, of course, second in the championship coming into this round. 116 points after the drop scores. One thing I love about the Porsche uh, website, loads of information is down the inside of RJ Josh goes Will Sharp, so the second place man championship but runs wide, and RJ Josh repays the compliment, back up the inside looking down the inside as they go into Montreal with Sharp but thinks better of it, goes back out for the wide line now a gain in momentum here, might build more speed as they go down into Agostini but before they do that they've got to negotiate the left hander, the sweeping left at Palmer, named after circuit owner Jonathan Palmer through Palmer Corner they go, so Arjo Josh maintaining that position over Will Sharp. And I was going back to talk about championship points. And of course tell you that the uh, website has all the information on it. It's a wonderful website, the Porsche Racing Drivers Association. And it gives you the total points and the drop scores to give you a very good picture of how things are going over the course of the season. 11 and 12, Sean Siddle and Cliff Graham involved in the mix. And Will Sharp still trying to put the pressure on Arjo Josh. Steve Potts in car number 25, trying to close up on the 79 car of Julian Brown, who at the moment leads the production boxsters. Will Sharp in 66, lost a little bit of ground on Arjo on that last lap, so he's got work to do as we start to look towards the second half of the race. And problems there for Hugh Peart in car number 36, who goes off into the pit lane, I think into retirement. Still this scrap for third place. With Jonathan Greensmith. Oh, and off goes eight and 37 off. It's all going David Jones and Michael Goodacre both out of the race. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back to Sneds and just before the break you saw the coming together of David Jones and Michael Goodacre. Both drivers have recovered which is great news but this is the battle for the production boxsters. Rebecca Jackson leads the productions at the moment. The black car is the recovering Steve Potts who went autocrossing at the uh, first part or the first lap I should say. Julian Brown in the red 79 car and then Mark McKenzie in 69 so the uh, production's having a, a good battle. The other driver we mentioned, Paul Good, uh, Michael Goodacre, is uh, currently third in the productions on his debut. So, plenty of good running order going on as we look at Jonathan Greensmith at the moment. Jonathan, who qualified in fourth, has got up to third. J.M. Lippmann, who qualified second, finds himself down in fourth place at the moment. There's Michael Goodacre in the production. You can see the production boxers sitting slightly higher. So good to see Michael making his debut. You can see the novice cross on the back of the car. And Rebecca Jackson, who's now been passed by Steve Potts. Steve, as we said, in the full race boxster, uh, getting clear. But Julian Brown putting a bit of pressure on Rebecca Jackson at the moment for the lead in the production class. Now, not many drivers in the productions. And I think as we've said before it's been a victim of its own success because drivers come in with the productions they're very easy to upbreak into the full race class A cars as Arjo Josh puts a big challenge on Nick Hull now was there a little bit of contact there Hull certainly had his eyes on his mirrors run, runs wide and Josh is through Arjo Josh makes up a place here's Julian Brown trying to close up on Rebecca Jackson so cracking racing going right the way down the order now I said there might not be that many cars in the production class but the facility is there that's the key thing so if you fancy coming in and being a, a Porsche driver and uh, running with the Porsche Racing Drivers Association check out the website they've got all the details there will tell you all about the drivers that race in the championship when the next round is and all, all sorts of information including the point scores which will tell you that man going through shot Richard Styrin leads the championship on 130 points from Will Sharp there goes Steve Boyles he's third in the championship Jonathan Greensmith the yellow car is fourth JM Lippmann's climbing up the order JM hasn't done as many races as the rest of them and there in the white car with the fluorescent trim is Will Sharp trying to close down on the union flag livery car of Nick Hull 
down behind them Cliff Graham who rejoined the championship at Zandvoort last time the triple header that we had and who could forget that amazing reverse grid race that we had in race three Cliff Graham looking at the outside line of Will Sharp I don't think the Sharps are overly happy with the track here still busy scoring points the pair of them and of course it's consistency over the course of the season that counts it's the same in any motor racing championship you'll get teams even in top level single seater racing that have their bogey circuits and it it as I say applies absolutely everywhere great four four way scrap then going on Arjo Josh still out front I think that was Arjo kicked up a bit of dirt there he's possibly lost a bit of ground to Nick Hull the union flag car closing in so the Brighton based driver Arjo Josh heads down towards Agostini Nick Hull several lengths behind I don't think he's in a position to challenge but certainly he'll be in the mirrors there is the man leading the 924 class Alistair Kirkham car number 72 second in the championship so he could well take the lead this weekend Simon Hawksley who is the overall championship leader on adjusted points uh, and indeed on oh, Arjo Josh is off Arjo's off spins he loses three places at the moment is he going to lose another one a wave yellow flags yes he does lose another place so Arjo Josh Mark McKenzie's gone past so William Sharp now ahead of Cliff Graham as we go back to the scrap for third place and they're closing in Two, the, the third and fourth place cars closing in on Steve Boyles who's running in second there's Boyles the black and red car Julian Brown's off so the scrap for the lead of the productions is finished and that means that Rebecca Jackson could be lined up for another win and potentially the championship lead Jonathan Greensmith still there in third JM Littman in fourth look at this one it's a three way scrap virtually now for second place Littman goes to the outside line it's an exploratory look at this time there leading by a quarter of a length of a straight is Richard Styron not seen too much of him in this one he's been away down the road there's Steve Boyle second Greensmith there in yellow is third now they are closing in I'm wondering if Boyles has got problems maybe the tyres are going it's so hot out there today fastest lap of the race with Richard Steyer in a two minutes 14.2 and uh, all of the top three drivers lapping in the 14s Jonathan Greensmith lapping in the 215s but uh, I think it's probably you've got to say perhaps been the more consistent at the moment holding that third place so Greensmith working hard effectively the battle for second in the championship as J.M. Littman goes down the inside of Agostini a classic passing manoeuvre here at Snet they're still side by side and Greensmith's going to try and hang on to it but I think he knows as they turn into the next corner into Hamilton so he can't do it Littman runs a little bit wide but J.M. Littman is up onto the podium in only his fifth start in the Porsche Championship so J.M. Littman he's already had uh, three podia in the last three races and he's barking himself out to be a very fast and consistent driver taking a podium only in only his second start of course that was at Zambor fair old track to have to do that now we've got all sorts of shenanigans here problems for David Jones who clogs another car through the dust David's had a bruising encounter let's hope that he can get the car running but at the moment I suspect he might be a little bit shell-shocked and Nick Hull spins so Nick Hull loses a place Gary Goodwin in 46 goes past him so Nick spins down the order but Richard Styron still out front the Logson group car and I know Richard wanted me to thank Logson every time that we, we see the car he wouldn't be able to go racing without uh, Ian Loggy is lining himself up for a touring car test incidentally and uh, it would be wonderful to see him racing in the championship again at some stage so Jonathan Greensmith passing a couple of the 924s so Steve Boyles now coming under a bit of pressure because JM Littman's got free of Jonathan Greensmith so into Murray's they go Steve Boyles still there in second position in car number 77 as the cars go along centre straights at this point it's up centre straight because it's a slight uphill climb and then down the other side towards Richie's the first corner now there is Michael Goodacre that's the silver grey car that's just been passed by the race leader so Michael and Anthony McVinsky in front David Jones 
He's out of his car safe and well, albeit leaving the door open, which I guess will cool things down a little bit. So Steve Boyle still there in second, but under massive pressure from J.M. Littman, of course, who wants to take a fourth second place on the bounce. So Littman working hard, wide line down into Palmer. He's possibly going to get a better run out of here. They've got back marker traffic coming up as well. Are we going to see a fourth, sec fourth successive second position for J.M. Littman? He really is plying on the pressure now as they come down into Agostini. Well, the uh, slower production boxster very rightly moves out of the way. Good driving from Michael Goodacre. Very good awareness of the faster cars coming through. Move clear. Does the same for Jonathan Greensmith as Arjo Josh. He's off in the wars again. I think he's got handling problems in the 44 car. Arjo's going to rejoin. It was a very strong performance on the opening part of the race. Gary Goodwin's had problems as well. I think that might well allow Nick Hull to get past him. So J.M. Littman is now through, so Littman's through into second place ahead of Steve Boyles and it is going to be four second places on the bounce but equaling the record with eight successive wins in a season it's Richard Steyer in his seventh fastest lap as well J.M. Littman, four second places on the bounce and Richard Steyer said it himself, J.M. is still learning the car but he's going to be mounting a challenge for Steyer when we get to the end of the season if not before Now down the order Cliff Graham and Will Sharp. Cliff Graham in sixth place, Sharp seventh. Sharp trying to close him down as they go through Corum. In towards Murray's, but there's the man that's done it again and equaling Dave Clark's record of eight successive wins in a season. Cliff Graham six, Will Sharp in seventh. Mark McKenzie will be behind them in eighth place. Carl Rossin goes through shots in the white 924. He's running sixth in the 924 club, but there, Going through shot was Alistair Kirkham very briefly who wins the 924s. It's also a win for Rebecca Jackson in the productions. So Richard Starr in winning from JM Lippman, Steve Boyles in third, then Jonathan Greensmith, Steve Brown fifth, and Cliff Graham rounding off the top six. In the 924s, it was Alistair Kirkham from Henry Sharp and Andrew Hannington in third. Rebecca Jackson takes her fourth win in the production boxers with Michael Goodacre taking second on his debut. So Richard, a, a great win yet again, but with surface temperatures over 40 degrees, that was quite tough, wasn't it? Yeah, very much so. And I think I had a fair bit of luck there because those guys, second, third, fourth, fifth, were fighting and I managed to get a gap. And then the, the key was nursing the car because the brakes was going off, the tyres were going off. It's the most beautiful day, but not when you sat in the race car. Alistair, what a fabulous end to the race there. Started P2 and yet over 14 seconds ahead of uh, Ken. Yeah, it was an interesting race. Uh, the first two laps, the, um, the boxers were everywhere. Um, I thought they'd taken up Rallycross. They were more off the circuit than they were on it. Um, and it was, they were just throwing up big clouds of dust everywhere. So we were trying to pick our way round them, not hit anybody. Um, and Hen was in the lead of, of the 924s. So really it was a case of literally let the dust settle, let the boxers clear off and then think about Hen. And um, I managed to follow him for a couple of laps and um, got him by outbreaking him at the end of the long back straight there into the S's. Fabulous win there and fastest lap, how was it for you? Well actually it was really hard work because it's absolutely boiling and I actually feel really poorly so it took everything that I've got. A lot of heat in the car obviously with the driving but uh, what about the car itself, did it perform any better or worse than this heat? Well, everyone's got slightly slower lap times than in qualifying because uh, it does take a toll on the car. Uh, obviously, cars prefer, the engines prefer colder, denser air, and it's a lot of pressure on the tyres as well. So uh, everyone's a little bit, uh, a little bit slower than in qualifying. Some of the biggest upheavals in American sports is in the world of motor racing, especially sports car racing. There's mergers, new series being proposed, audiences coming and going, drivers getting younger and younger. That's why you need the Racing Insiders on MAV-TV to help you navigate the turmoil. 
The Racing Insiders is a new weekly 30-minute news show covering sports car racing, whether it's being done professionally, globally, or by the local grassroots club. Award-winning journalist Bill Wood will host the weekly discussions along with race-winning insiders Peter Keene in Florida and Jim Daniels in Tennessee. It's a fast-paced, edgy sports show. They'll even reach out to guest insiders to bring you behind the scenes insider information you'll want to know. This new era in sports car racing needs the Racing Insiders. The Racing Insiders on MAV TV, Thursdays at 2 and 5 p.m. Eastern, and again on Saturdays at noon. Arjo, third season in the championship, and you've had a fairly steady rise during those seasons. Um, I've been working hard at it. Uh, I think the first season I probably went off at every track um, in the series uh, at some stage. Last season I probably came off at half of them and this year I've only come off at Snetterton. So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an improvement in my spin-offs. I'm, I'm hitting less people um, and I'm going a bit quicker. Always a positive there, that's the main thing. <laughs> the, uh, no, steady progression and obviously during that period you must be learning the racecraft of um, racing lines etc? Uh, yes, um, I only did six track days before I started and the Boxster series is really competitive now so you're you know from the start line it, it's quite aggressive and you have to be really you know together for that first lap or two um, and I've learned a lot yeah I mean it takes uh, I think probably three seasons for the penny to drop on some things even just braking technique or you can learn a line quite easily it's the car control that takes time. So I'm, I think I'm starting to get there, but I've got a long way to go. RJ Josh, a great ambassador for new racing drivers in the UK and a great ambassador for the Toyo Tires Championship. Richard Styron on pole, JM Lippman alongside, then Steve Boyles and Jonathan Greensmith. Steve Brown fifth with Cliff Graham alongside, then it's William Sharp and Mark McKenzie eighth. RJ lines up in ninth, Sean Siddle tenth with Steve, Bo Steve Potts and Nick Holt eleventh and twelfth. They're followed by Gary Goodwin and Chris Valentine. Rebecca Jackson on pole for the productions, then it's Michael Goodacre with Julian Brown, and then the 924s, Alistair Kirkham and Hen Sharp, Andrew Hannington third, Clive Morrison fourth, followed by Anthony McVinsky and Cole Rossin, then Paul Bravo and Richard Matthews, David Jones, Peter Smith and Hugh Peart, completing the 28 car grid once again. So Richard Styron having, having equaled the eight successive win record in a season, I have to ha hasten to add, of Dave Clark, the inaugural champion, inaugural double champion in actual fact, and uh, Richard Starring could go one better in this one, but it's a very crowded circuit, as you can see, and he's got a fair bit of work to do. 20 minutes work, plus a little bit of extra time. Lights out, away they go. Starring gets away well. So too does Jonathan Greensmith and Steve Boyles, either side of J.M. Littman. The whole field makes a terrific start. Down to Riches. Now is Styring going to be put under pressure here? He's out front. He's clear. Greensmith second. He's followed by Steve Boyles, J.M. Littman. Then Cliff Graham followed by Steve, Steve Brown. So Steve Brown having a good start. Now running a little bit wide there was the 69 car off. Mark McKenzie kicks up the dirt as he tries to get back on. Trying to go up the inside line as they go down to Palmer's, but William Sharp was equal to that. Problems for Nick Hull, who starts, or hopefully will start, uh, from the pit lane. Not looking too hopeful at the moment. But the race leader's down to Agostini, and you can see it's not a defensive line, is it, from the race leader? So Richard Styron, who started his career in the 924s, picked up three race wins in the 924s, and then moved into the... Uh, into the Boxsters, he's I think the most successful driver in terms of Boxster Podia and if he can win this race he'll be one away from the career total of the, the whole career total of Dave Clark but we'll talk more about that I think probably at our next round at Brands Hatch which uh, takes place in August and we'd be delighted if you could join us at the Kent Circuit for that one the first weekend in August meanwhile it's Richard Styron who continues to lead Steve Boyle second then Jonathan Greensmith J.M. Lippman is there in fourth place so he's got all the work to do again a bit of uh, deja vu here from what we saw in race number one Cliff Graham fifth and it's Steve Brown the yellow and blue car another driver who started off 
racing in 924s, a very brief spell in the production box, just then uprated the car to join the top flight last year. Heading around core and wide line from JM Lippmann, and that just loses him a little bit of ground at the moment, but JM exploring the lines to see where he can be equal to Jonathan Greensmith. The lap times today generally have been have been faster in the other formulae. And we'll get a handle on that as the race starts to develop, but it does look like the uh, 2 minutes 14 that we saw from Richard Styrin on lap 2 of race 1 is, is probably going to be beaten here today. So through they go, Styrin starting to pull away. Race victory by 4.8 seconds in race number 1, so still very much the man to beat in this championship. And... Richard again a good ambassador for the sport um, a very likeable guy so many good likeable characters in this championship it's a very very friendly paddock JM Lippmann getting very close there to Jonathan Greensmith these two were so close in race number one and remember both of the relative newcomers to the championship have bedded themselves in very well indeed and we, we could probably expect them to be future champions certainly battling it out for championship leagues plus Will Sharp who had his worst finish so far this season William sorry to rub it in mate but seventh place in race number one the worst finish of the season for him took a fifth at Silverstone so having said that both Will Sharp and Steve Boyles maintaining 100% records uh, in terms of finishing so very good reliability from Will Sharp and Steve Boyles and commiserations to Julian Brown who lost his 100% finishing record in that race so just the two guys now in the championship that, that have attended all the races and finished them all so far and Steve Boyles just going out of shot to the left is one of those two men that have finished all the races thus far now in terms of the championship you can drop your worst three scores so that allows you to, to miss a round or to have a couple of non-finishes or a couple of lowly finishes. Um, or I guess it facilitates things like taking time off the work and things like that because all these guys have to go to work. Uh, and girls, of course, because the championship does uh, welcome female drivers as well. Linda Warren not with us this weekend, but of course Rebecca Jackson winning the production boxers in race number one. So down the hill, now lap time's very definitely quicker. Two minutes 12 by Richard Styron on lap two. There's Henshaw past Rebecca Jackson. Chasing him, the man that won the 924's first time out, Alistair Kirkham putting him under pressure. Now Rebecca Jackson trying to fight back as they go along center straight, side by side. Jackson nips across the front. So Rebecca on her way, perhaps to another race win in this one Julian Brown not taking the start incidentally so it would be a little bit much to expect Michael Goodacre to challenge Rebecca who's got a fair bit more experience so Steve Brown William Sharp and Arjo Josh three of them coming out of Agostini down the little short run into the left hander at Hamilton on this infield section and the spectator banking here now you probably if you're playing spot the spectator you won't oh and Brown kicking up the dirt now that's going to lose him a little bit of time so William Sharp well I think have noticed there that he might be able to climb up another couple of places Arjo Josh in 44 the gentleman we were talking to at the start of this part of the programme only did a few track days before coming in and joining the championship so you've got drivers like Arjo that are newcomers to racing and then you've got the vastly experienced people like Jonathan Greensmith and J.M. Littman are here Richard Styron going through shot Steve Boyles and this is a championship that welcomes and encompasses all experience all ages as well and both sexes of course as we've already mentioned so if you are thinking about coming racing take a closer look at the Toyo Tyres Porsche Championship there's Richard Styron now looking for his ninth win of the season and nine wins on the bounce as I say, we'll start to rewrite the Porsche Championship record books. Very wide line there from William Sharp. Arjo Josh trying to close in. David Jones off the circuit, so it was a difficult race one for him. It doesn't look like the meeting here at Snetterton is getting any better in the 924s. So hard lines to him. Arjo kicks up a little bit of dirt as they come out of Palmer. Run down to Agostini. I don't think there are any overtakes in the offing here. So Steve Brown, the 33-year-old 
from Banbury. There's Hensharp. Hensharp's leading the 924s. So, despite saying this wasn't probably his favourite circuit, he's putting together a very good run at the moment. Hensharp is away looking for his uh, fifth win in the class of the season four so far took fastest lap in the uh, first race so Richard Styron still building up the lead here comes JM Littman looking down the inside the white car side by side with the yellow machine of Jonathan Greensmith and JM Littman can't quite do it but we saw him manage to pull off the manoeuvre in race number one so these two have been very very close some good scrapping between the pair of them Jack Lippmann 7th in the championship Steve Brown 8th Steve Potts 9th Nick Hull in 10th followed by Mark McKenzie and these two very much still scrapping hard here at Snetterton with Richard Styron the 42 year old from Leeds company director of Styron Motors still well clear across the line they go again Steve Bowles is going to be very determined to hang on to second place in this one after losing out in the late stages of race number one this could be Paul's uh, best result since race one of the championship as J.M. Lippmann again looks up the inside line coming up into Montreal slightly Montreal wider line here it's all over the back of Greensby at the moment these two as I say very evenly matched and playing a good game of cat and mouse and Littman very close as they go into Palmer's. Just a couple of feet between the cars, so some precision driving going on from the pair. This might help Boyles a bit. Look, Boyles takes a wide line as they go into Agostini. Littman round the outside. This is a very brave move round the outside, but he can't quite do it. I don't think it's enough grip there. Maybe in the wet that could be a move. But tees himself up to look at the inside of Hamilton. I think he might be a little bit too far back. Yes, he is. Drops back into the slipstream and following but you know what you've got to have a go that's exactly what J.M. Littman is doing so a really good game of cat and mouse between these two probably the closest battle on circuit at the moment still styring leading from Steve Boyles so Littman continues to put the pressure on and Jonathan Greensmith who took a podium in his fourth start in the championship that was at Silverstone the second place for him there and has been denied the podium since then Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back to Snetterton, round 10 of the Toyo Tyres Porsche Championship and a challenge on for third place. J.M. Littman goes down the inside, he's through, but he goes wide on the exit and going back through is Jonathan Greensmith. Greensmith back into third, great challenge though by Littman. This pair have been absolutely tied together the whole meeting. This is incredible driving from the pair of them. Back down the order, a spin for Paul Bravo. A little bit of contact perhaps with Hugh Peart. Bravo, Paul gets going again and rejoins the circuit. So action down in the 924s and still Jonathan Greensmith running in third place. J.M. Littman closes up again, wants another go, but the fastest man on the circuit, the championship leader, Richard Styron, is still clear. You can't you can just about see him in the distance over the hill and far away as far as these two are concerned. Dicing up her. There's Steve Boyles in second place. So Boyles back on the podium. Massive wobble there. I think that's Anthony Mekvinsky, car number 27. So Anthony gets back on track. Carl Rossin chasing him, but still we're focused on this scrap for third place. Littman getting closer again. Seems to have the speed, but he just can't find the chink in the armour of the man in front. Now outside line of Agostini. This is brave stuff from Littman. If he can hang on to it. No, he can't. Might get a faster line on the exit and a run up towards Hamilton. We saw him try to do this earlier on in the meeting. Nick Hull's got his brakes on. Lippmann looks on the inside line, not quite there. Still Cliff Graham back in fifth place. The red car with the white stripes. So around Hamilton and into Oggy's corner. This looking across the infield. Lippmann again looking up the inside. Well, wherever you look on track, there are people dicing everywhere. Steve Brown ahead of 44, Arjo Josh. So Steve Brown... At the moment, I think running in about eighth position. And uh, Steve 
so far this year has finished outside of the top seven so he won't be overly impressed with his results he had to miss the um, Zanthorpe round so three races shy there'll be his drop scores for the season so back with J.M. Littman again are they closing up on Steve Boyles out front coming down through the bum hole Littman trying everything it's going to have to grab some momentum and tee up a run down the inside onto one of these corners he can't do it here on the sweeping right hander at Coram this race concluding the first half of the season the tenth race of a 20 race schedule for the championship eight events the next one as we said Brands Hatch then we go to Alton Park followed by Cadwell the penultimate round at Donington Park on the 20th of October Richard Styron now of course getting into back marker traffic in this 20 minute race it's going to equate to around about nine laps some of the 924s are probably going to be on the lead lap it's a three mile circuit here 2.9689 if you want to be precise about it so Clive Morrison in the black 924 the red one is Anthony McVinsky and following him 41 Carl Rossi with that damage on the car from race number one Clive at the moment fourth in class Hensharp still leading the 924 from Alistair Kirkham and Andrew Hannington in third place Lippmann very wide again he loves the outside line that's real good stuff I haven't seen I don't think I've seen an outside maneuver pulled off at Agostini in the three years or so that we've been running on this circuit in any formula but this is brave stuff from Jam Lippmann who's clearly getting a little bit frustrated now and he wants to try and get past but oh god he's off Littman goes off at Oggies onto the dirt and that's going to take the pressure off Jonathan Greensmith spin for Steve Brown and Arjo so they go off JM Littman recovers it looks like a good recovery from JM I was just about to add that Jonathan Greensmith of course was perfectly within his rights to drive a defensive race uh, which he was doing and JM Littman he was trying hard and perhaps a little bit of unfamiliarity relative unfamiliarity with the car it's only his sixth start in the Boxsters uh, and the spin ensues but after taking four second places on the bounce JM has recovered in fifth place now, JM Littman still is going to secure some very useful points here as we look at Steve Brown Steve Potts behind him so Steve Steve Brown the uh, 2010 runner-up looks around the outside of R. Joe Josh, 924 champion in 2011 and raced in the production boxsters last year so R. Joe gets past back with this three-way scrap for fourth place in the 924s and it's Clive Morrison still out front at the moment on his day class winner Clive took a win in uh, round two of the championship at Silverstone but at the moment down in fourth position in class coming under pressure from Anthony McVinsky they're coming down into Agostini McVinsky looks to the inside line that's the classic pass here a little bit of a little bit of trading between the two cars probably a little bit closer than Clive Morrison would have liked Carl Rossi closing up as well so those three really engaged in a super little scrap between the three of them closest battle I think in the 924s Alistair Kirkham still chasing Henry Sharp at the front of the field there we go not too bad is it between first and second Henry Sharp looking for his fifth win of the year and really chucking the car into the corners great driving skills there as he goes through Murray's and heads down centre straight once again so they're first and second third at the moment in class is Andrew Hannington who you haven't seen returning to the championship which is very very good to see Now, interestingly, it's a, a swap of form for the 924, so it comes to Richard Styron in a minute, but Alistair Kirkham's got the fastest lap, running in second. It was the other way around in race number one. But Richard Styron, fastest man on track, two seconds a lap quicker than the cars were in round nine, which was staged on Saturday. Back we go to Clive Morrison and Tony Mekvinsky. Lovely side-on shot of the 924. Still a few 924s available to buy and come a race if you want to to get involved but the chequered flags being readied for Richard Styron who rewrites the record book with his ninth consecutive win and the record there nine consecutive wins in one season goes to Richard Styron it's also his eighth fastest lap we're looking at the two Steves 
Brown leading pots at the moment. I think that's possibly the way they're going to finish in eighth and ninth position. They've had a cracking dice in the closing stages of this 10th race of the championship. Rebecca Jackson, I think, is going to take another win in the productions as well. It's going to be Rebecca's fifth win. Fourth time she's had fastest lap. There's the chequered flag as across the line goes Steve Brown who gets the better of pots those two of course both racing in productions last year now the battle for the 924s looks like it's going to the flag and at the moment Hen Sharp's got two and a half lengths or so lead over Alistair Kirkham in second place so we'll see whether Kirkham can mount a challenge as they come around Coral he's closed right up now and is he going to make a move as they come into Murray's this could be do or die he's a little bit too far back Back end starts to swing around. I think he's going to have to settle for second place. Although on points, by my reckoning, on drop scores, Alistair Kirkham will take the championship lead. Across the line. There they go. And it's Henshop that takes another win. Alistair Kirkham will take the championship lead on drop points. Richard Styron maintains his championship lead. Jonathan Greensmith secures that third place. So he's back on the podium after a while. And Steve Boyles taking that second place. Cliff Graham got an excellent fourth. J.M. Littman recovered well after hounding Steve Boyles right the way through the race to take fifth position. And Will Sharp gets sixth place in car number 66. Henry Sharp wins the 924s from Alistair Kirkham with Andrew Hannington completing the podium and the productions. Another win. A fifth win for Rebecca Jackson this year. Michael Goodacre again in second position on his debut here at Snetterton. So Steve, starting your third there, good start and uh, pretty good battle. Yeah, I had a really good start. At one point I was thinking about ever taking Styron on the way or pushing him down the straight. Um, I stopped in second, got in second, stopped in second. Um, I saw Lippmann and uh, Jonathan fighting it out behind me. Um, I think they were just keeping themselves at bay. I just managed to hang in there. Um, it looked like Lippmann went off towards the end. Um, I kept the gap reasonably close for the first few laps uh, to start in, but after about six laps I started to pull away. But, um, that was my aim for the weekend, to finish second and uh, third yesterday and second today. And really pleased with it. Good for championship points as well. Yeah, if, I think if I work it out, um, this will hopefully leave me in second. Um, that's what I'm aiming for. So Jonathan, we seem to have broken that fourth place curse. Well done, getting the third. Yeah, excellent news. Um, good good result for the team really third on the podium uh, fifth sixth race into it so can't be, can't be better now most of that race the main battle seemed to be in the third and fourth place uh, yeah uh, Lippmann was definitely pushing me to an extent which uh, I was getting quite annoyed about just the uh, slight the slight rubbing and then his more contact so I wasn't too happy about that but justice paid off when he um, spat it off at Hamilton so now this podium place must give you added um, incentive for the next round then? Oh definitely, it was, uh, we're always progressing forward, each meeting we do and each race we're always getting quickest times and everything else, so yeah, it's all, it's all good news for us. Excellent, well, well done and great racing. Thank you very much, cheers. So Hen, congratulations, first place again, you got back in that top slot, but not the easiest of races. No it wasn't, no, my tyres were off after the, well, after the first three or four laps, so I just had to sit there, try and just get a gap and just try and keep it going and the last three laps my tyres were completely gone and another lap I think Alistair would have probably had me but uh, I did everything I could for that race and I, I managed to do it. Your car overall has been fairly faultless throughout last season and this season, yeah. uh, apart from the tyres, did it cue, um, cope okay with the humidity? Yeah it did very much so, nothing wrong with that car at all, we've about to go on the dyno run so fingers crossed everything's alright for that. Excellent and now you're back in that top slot, gives you more impetus for the next round? Yeah very much so, Yeah, can't wait for Brands and see what happens there. Richard Styrin then has the overall championship lead. Will Sharp second from Steve Balls. Remember, these don't include the drop scores. Jonathan Greensmith in fourth, J.M. Littman fifth, and Steve Brown is in sixth position. The 924s led by Alistair Kirkham from Simon Hawksley, then Clive Morrison in third, and Rebecca Jackson goes into the lead of the productions. Julian Brown down to second, and Bernie Princey remaining in third. Join us at Brands Hatch for event five.